how to create gradient pattern mask effects in Photoshop. I'm using CC220. Create something like that. Fresh document, white background. Now I'm just going to go to another document and that's got a transparent background. That's a thousand by thousand. The other one's two thousand by two thousand. Go to the elliptical marquee tool in the tools panel. And this is for a pattern. So I'm just going to create a very basic sphere using a gradient. So with that selection, now instead of just using the gradient just now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the select menu and then modify. And I'm going to use feather. I'm going to set it to 40. To vary the value, up to you. Click OK. Now with the gradient, I'm going to go for radial. I'm going to use a very basic gradient, black to white. And you can change your blending mode. I'm difference, normal, up to you. And just apply it. And you can vary it, obviously keep applying it until you're happy with the design you create. So you can just keep changing it. And again, you can go to blending mode. You can use reverse if you prefer to have the black around the edge, which is probably better. So that's using that gradient. And of course you can vary the gradient. You can go and create your own gradient as well. And you can put the highlight in different positions. So once you're happy with your gradient, now you can see there's the feathering around the edge. What I'm going to do, I'm going to deselect it now. So select menu and deselect. And I want to define it as a pattern. So edit menu and define pattern. Click OK. And it's got a transparent background and it's really good for patterns, having that transparent background. So you don't have a square pattern design. Fresh document. Now just go to edit and fill. Contents, pattern, custom pattern. Go and select the pattern you just created. And go for script on and symmetry fill. And click OK. Set the symmetry type to seven. The scale you can vary, you can make it smaller, bigger, up to you. Obviously the bigger it is, the more it will fill the image. And you can also vary the width and height. And that will change the entire design that's generated. So you can even create very, very small sort of swirly designs there. Very easy by doing that. You can see the design there. Now I don't want that design, I just wanted to show you that you can create that sort of similar design using this approach. So edit and fill, same settings, script, etc. Click OK. And vary the width. Pushing that down to the minimum. And likewise the height, you can change that. And the combination will generate all kinds of different designs. Something like that. Very similar to the design I showed you at the start. And it really depends on the initial gradient source. So you can vary that gradient. What you can also do, of course, you can resize that gradient. You don't have to use it as that size. Sadly, the pattern feature does not have an initial scaling feature. It would be really nice if it did. So you can just quickly go back to the source document, resize it using the transform tools, found in box, and again, define pattern. Then just go back to the original design, edit and fill. Make certain you select the new pattern, that's that one, and then click OK.
and you can see the design there. So this time it's not so crunched up. So you can see the spheres a bit more clearly. Again, you can vary the width and height, just moving backwards and forwards until you're happy with your design. And the colour randomness is set to 1. It's a key thing as well. So that's the reason why I'm using grayscale for the gradient. It creates a nice range. If you wanted, say, like all red designs, create a red gradient. And you've got your design there with a bit of shadow. So it's got a real nice shadowy effect. Now I'm going to alter that initial gradient design. What you can do, you can apply filters. At this point you can't because it's not selected. I'll just go up to the motor and select the gradient and then, then go to filter. And you can use like liquify, oil paint, wave, Now you're in liquefy. What you can do, you can use various, there's a whole load of tools over there. Just, just liquefy, modify it slightly, just change the size of the brush, apply it in different ways. And you can find many videos on graphic extras showing you more about the liquefy filter. So create all kinds of different shapes, like more like a teardrop, or maybe this time a crescent. Click OK. And of course that can be defined as a pattern. Simply just go to the edit menu and again define pattern. Click OK. So that's now stored. What you can now do, and I'm going to go to edit and fill. Oh, actually, I'm going to create a fresh document. So I'm just going to go back to the history. Just clear that down. Edit and fill. Make certain you select the pattern again. Quite often I do click the wrong one. <laughs> Use the same one as I had before. Click OK. Same link script, symmetry fill. And you can see now, from the same gradient, you've got this lovely sort of well, unusual flower-like design. Probably more. And again, you can vary the width and height. To create all kinds of Beautiful, unique designs. You could create this on a layer as well. So you could then create on a layer and then duplicate it multiple times. Fill the screen. Now I'm just going to go back to the initial gradient. I'm going to resize it, just make it a bit smaller again. And what you can do, you can duplicate. So you can hold down the alter option key and drag just to duplicate it. So you can create multiple copies. So it's got lovely diagonal design there. And again, you can go over to the edit menu and define pattern. Give it a name, click OK. Then go back to the original document. And then edit and fill. Again, remember to select the pattern. That symmetry fill is still on. Go to the custom pattern. Select that one. Now you've got another design. And what you can do again, you can vary the scale. You can also vary the width. And height. You can then create all kinds of unique sort of like trailing effects there. So, and also just going outwards like that, which sort of expanding outwards. And they're obviously all the same size. So I'm going to vary it next to actually shrink them a bit. So yeah, you can create this sort of nice zoom effect. Go back to the original that uh, design. And what you can do, you can select those individual 
layers, and then you can resize them using the bounding box. Let's make it slightly smaller. Oops, don't want that one. I want the other one. I want to select the second one. With the second second one selected, then resize that. And position it just so it's like a couple of planets sort of going off in the distance. Now you could create, say, three or four, maybe five, ten shapes, just have them going off, zooming off into top corner. Again, define that as a pattern. Click OK. Then edit menu and fill. Of course, I could create a fresh document again. Just go to the history panel. Edit and fill. Now you've got this zoom design there, so click OK. And you can see the design there now. You've got sort of, instead of the same size, you've actually got them slightly shrinking. And again, you can vary the pattern, width and height, and change the scale if you wish as well. Got a nice twirl effect there. And click OK. So you've got a quirl, nice twirl design there. Not a quirl design, whatever a quirl design is. A twirl design. And you can always undo at any point. So you can always go to the edit menu and undo. You can also use the fade command as well. So you can create fades for these fills. So you can combine them in different ways. Maybe combine it on, put them on different layers and then combine them using blending modes. Or maybe convert it into a smart object and then combine them that way. Maybe use them in an animated movie using the timeline. So again, just vary the width. Just keep experiment, experiment. The preview actually sort of matches the end result. Things like the spiral script doesn't, but this, you can have a fairly decent idea what the end result will look like. Maybe not the size in particular, because sometimes it's slightly different, I think, size. But there you've got that lovely, sort of beautiful design going outwards. Now, just going to go back to the original gradient again. Now you could also duplicate that, of course, and maybe lay it on top of each other, create a sort of pyramid design. But it's a layer, so what you, you can also apply effects to it. You can also go to the layer menu. And I'm just going to bring up the layers panel at this point. So window and layers. You see it's a layer there. So go to Layer Menu and Layer Mask. Reveal All. Now you've got a mask. The mask has been selected. So with the mask selected, what you can do, you can apply a mask to it. And you can use the same, you can of course use brush strokes and many other things, but I'm using the gradient. So you've got your gradient white to black gradient there. You can see it's reverse at the top. And you can apply that over and over again. And of course you can vary things. You don't have to use that gradient with the mask. You could go and select a totally different gradient. You could also use blending modes. So you can go to mode at the top and then apply it, say, with difference. So now you've got this lovely like ring design where you've got that black at the, at the bottom and then the sort of very faded grey along the top. Edit and, but it doesn't work. You have to go back over to the layers. Man, I'm not certain why they can't just have it select define pattern to be. Anyway, that, they don't do it that way. So you have to go back to the actual design, then edit menu and define pattern. So just go to that little brush that's in the layer option. And again, what you can do then: edit menu and fill. Make certain you select that. Yeah, that's the one with the transparency, the mask. 
and you've got your design there. And of course, you can vary the mask in all kinds of ways. So literally from the same gradient sphere, you can create thousands of different designs just by varying the mask. And they've all got that sort of blurry, unusual, as a sort of weird feel. And again, you can vary the scale if you wish, but this experiment again with the width and the height, that's the key thing. I'm going to keep the layers panel because I want to go back to the mask. If I clear it, I have to come bring it back again. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Now I'm going to change the mask again. So I've just added the layer mask. Make certain it's selected. That's the key thing. And this is a fresh thing. What I'm going to do now, using the difference option, you can add just little holes in it. Make it a mottling effect. So instead of like completely making the thing disappear, you've got it still there, fairly strong, but now it's got holes. And that's using the difference applied to that layer mask. So it was a completely fresh layer mask. And you can repeat that over and over again, just keep adding different holes and maybe bring in a bit more of the old design as well, just by repeating the, the gradient on top of the earlier gradient. Now you've got your design. Again, you can't define it as a pattern. You have to go back to that little brush there, make certain it's sort of editable, and then you can go to edit and define pattern. Click OK. So now that's defined as a mask. And now when you go and use a pattern, create a pattern, apply it, you're going to get this sort of mottly design. So okay. make certain the custom pattern selected. Select there. Everything's exactly the same as before. Click OK. And now you can see you've got those holes all the way through it. So it creates a nice sort of spotted design. And again, you can still vary the pattern translation. Create all kinds of spotted designs. And of course, once you've applied the effect, what you can do, you can always go to the filter menu, apply, liquefy, apply, stylize, and many, many more. And you can always apply it multiple times as well, the fill. So edit and fill. Again, same design. And of course, there's many other symmetry types. I'm just using seven here, but there's eight and nine are pretty effective as well. But again, you can just vary the width. The preview, if you see something you like, just try it. Very quick, bang. You've got a really, really nice model design there. And again, that's if you apply it on a layer, you can then add a mask to that as well, if you wish. So I'm just going to clear that. Go back to the gradient again. What you can also do is filter menu and liquefy. Make certain you've got the brush in the layer. Selected. Otherwise, you'll be trying to do it with the mask. Key thing. Now you can see the great. It doesn't show the the mask in this point. You, but now what you can do? Just change the size, and then just warp it. Warp the design. Very more mushroom-like shape. Click OK. Now you can see. Now you've got the mask. Some of the mask, obviously, it's the you still see around the edge as well. But you can always vary the mask as well. Because you can always go to layer menu and layer mask. And you can delete it. Don't have to keep what you've got. So layer mask and delete. That's back. No mask now. Now I could have gone back to the... But unfortunately my history panel only, only stores about 10 or 15 entries. And you can define that as a pattern. And again, you can go to layer menu and 
lay a mask and reveal all again. So you can now add a mask to that. Now that's selected, so you're in mask mode. And you can just create little holes in that. Just very subtle move of the tool. So just very, very tiny length. Just chop into that. And you go all the way around. I'm not going to do it. I could do it for hours. Just keep adding more holes. Up. I'm not. Now I could go back to the layers panel and then make certain you selected that little brush in the entry. And you can apply other effects. Maybe go to filter menu, distort and wave. Don't have to always just apply the same liquefy. You could use wave as well. Create a nice wavy design. I'm going to undo that. And again, once you've done that, you can go to edit menu and define pattern. So now you've got that lovely distorted design with the mask. Edit and fill. Again, all the same settings. Go down to the last one created, or second to the last one, and click OK. And you can see now you've got this slightly more triangular shape. But again, you can vary the, the width so you can see different aspects of the pattern tile. Okay, vary the height. Sadly, there's no randomised feature. I'd love a randomised feature, though, so you could just click it and just try out a whole range of different settings. But you can just run through them, just move backwards and forwards, and you can create that sort of design. So a nice sort of you know, zigzag sort of like design. So edit menu, fill. Now this time I'm going to go for the... Same design there. Now I could have selected the mask one as well. Now that'd be another feature I'd love to see. You could actually use multiple patterns in the same design. So again, vary the width and height. And you can see you can create that. This gives it like a three-dimensional lattice-like effect. Now go to Edit Menu and Fill. And select the one with the mask. That's it. Click OK. And you can see now, instead of the complete design that you had before, you've got this sort of like gaps in it. And again, you can vary the width. You can go through. Some seem to suggest that there's no mottling at all. Some do. Some don't. So you can just run it then. If you're happy with that design, click OK. And you can see that design there. So again, you've got all these lovely spots appearing as well as the mottling of the original gradient design. So what you can then do, of course, you can go to filter menu, stylize, an oil paint, or maybe find edges, apply some filters to it, or not, up to you. That gives a sort of smeary-like effect. And you repeat that. Oil paint, repeat it a couple of times. Image menu, adjustments, and levels, just to brighten it up a bit. I always find the oil paint, I love the oil paint, it does sort of make it a bit duller. So you can just freshen it up using the input levels. Click OK. So you've got that design there. What you can also do, image menu, adjustments, vibrance, maybe make it really intense. Again, you can apply the vibrance a couple of times. Do you know, make it quite garish, very intense garish mottled design there. And again, what you can also do, colour lookup. Image menu, adjustments and colour lookup. So you might not want that colour scheme. You may want it to be green and red, sienna blue, sepia. So a whole variety of different colour schemes can be created just by using colour lookup. But gradients, 
with patterns can create whole heaps of combinations, especially using the scripts. And the symmetry fill is a really, really good one for creating all kinds of unique backgrounds, overlays. Now you can also bring that into use maybe with 3D effects. Maybe go to the 3D section and use it to create landscapes, weird and wonderful backgrounds. So a whole range of different designs. I'm just going to go and select. Now this one I created earlier. It's a slightly darker sphere. Again, select that. And again, you can see a whole range of different varieties simply by changing the width and height. You can create like swirly design there. That's quite nice doing that when you put the width and height fairly low. In, in the middle, I should say. Right in the middle. Then you end up with that sort of nice swirly effect. Now that's a bit too big. What I want to do is actually create it really Go to a layer, so layer, new layer, put it onto a layer. So any of those designs I created earlier can be put onto a layer. And then you can use that again, just apply it again. Now, because it was a bit too big, it went off the screen. And put, the preview doesn't really show that because the preview shows it with a lot of gap. Now, it, that is not the end result. So just change the pattern scaling. Just reduce it down a bit. And then you'll see the change of colours. Can't do anything about that. It's random. Click OK. So now what you've got, you've got that design. And that's on a layer. So what you can do, hold down the Alt Option key, drag and duplicate. You can fill the entire script. You don't have to. Fill maybe one half. Maybe repeat it a couple of times. Maybe repeat it and then have it zooming in on itself. Or maybe blur it. Maybe have the original design and then another design, blur that. Or maybe distort the original design. You can also resize it using the bounding box. You can rotate it, maybe apply warps to it as well via the edits menu and tr transform and warp. Now, once, I, once you're happy with it, layer menu and flatten image. And what you can then do, filter menu and oil paint just to smear it in a bit. And again, go to image menu, adjustments, to modify the colors, if you wish. So that's all from gradients, patterns, and masks. Hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always any new tutorials, all the time, about Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Comments, always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.